Memphis Mining makes Bitcoin mining accessible to everyone. Start mining in as little as 48 hours with our turnkey hardware, online and mining directly to your Bitcoin wallet within two business days. Find out more at compassmining.io and get started now. Hey miners, welcome or welcome back to the channel. Here we have it, election day in the USA. Bitcoin has taken off in a big way, now surpassing $70,000 per coin. Obviously the miners have followed suit with many of the miners we cover on the channel already up in excess of double digits on today's session. In addition to all of that exciting election news, we also have production reports out from a number of the core miners we cover on the channel and a few additional pieces of news that we wanted to discuss. Before we get into all that, please take a second, smash the like button, you guys. Big help to myself and the channel. Anthony loves it. If you're not already subscribed, McNally Money, feel free to join. This is your number one source for Bitcoin mining content on YouTube going into a Bitcoin bull run. You're definitely going to want to make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell icon. Finally, leave a comment in the section below. Let me know if you're holding any of the miners we discuss in today's video, your thoughts on the election tonight and the results and your outlook in terms of Bitcoin price for the final few months of 2024. Now, with that being said, let's get in to today's video. It's officially election day in the United States of America. 2024 election is underway. I know you were listening in the background there, Anthony. I've been looking across social media this morning. I've heard everything from a Trump sweep to a Harris sweep and everything in between. What are you hearing over in the UK? How are you feeling about the election outcome today? Um, I mean, I've just been watching CNBC and they're saying it's fairly neck and neck at the moment. But if you look at the price action with Bitcoin, you'd probably suggest maybe the market is looking towards Trump at the moment, but that's, that can change. It's so close. It's on a knife edge. It's down to a couple of states, I think, and even CNBC is saying whoever takes Pennsylvania ends up winning, so uh, it might even just be down to one state. Um, but, you know, I mean, from an outsider, I mean, we're, you know, we've said this before about politics in any of these countries. It's it's, it's not, it's a bit dire, so I'm not paying overly too much attention. And to be honest with you, Bitcoin will do what Bitcoin does. It doesn't need either or um, uh, to get through. I mean, I know that um, it's had more endorsement from the Republicans, so that's a positive thing there. But Bitcoin will still be here if um, if the Democrats get through. It certainly will. All Bitcoin needs is inflation and fiat money printing, and I'm pretty confident any government uh, or politician will be doing that. Interestingly enough, I actually picked up my first Ledger hardware device, just came in yesterday, so I'm going to be setting that up as well. I'm going to be one of those people we talk about, Anthony, that's actually pulling coins off exchange and putting a portion of those in cold storage. So that'll be interesting. Might do a tutorial on that one as well. You talk about Bitcoin price. Now, I don't know if it's the anticipation of a potential Trump win or it's just the fear, uncertainty, doubt uh, now that we're getting closer to the event and things are starting to maybe go back to normal. But Bitcoin, as you alluded to, Anthony, is on a tear this morning. Crossed 70,000. The high I've seen is around 70,300 US. So definitely some strength heading into today's main event in the United States. How are you feeling about the actual price action this morning? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's again, it's, you know, getting up towards the, um, is up towards the whole time high, which, which was, you know, 74,000, which it achieved in March. So, um, you know, not, not too much nice little rise today. Um, again, I think, you know, that, that the, the election has some bearing on this, um, but uh, yeah, it's it's you know it's very much welcomed, very much welcomed. It certainly is. We had Jason Less on the program last night, CEO of Riot Platforms. They just came out with Q3. I know he's going to be watching the election outcome very closely, as with many of the CEOs we host on the channel. So make sure you guys check that interview out. Moving along to our mid morning minor update. A very favorable look across the board here in the mining sector, obviously on the back of that Bitcoin strength. We've had a fairly dismal couple days here in the mining space, red across the account day after day. It's nice to see a rebound here. Many of the companies actually up double digit percentages already about half day, halfway through trading. Yeah, nice to see. And, um, and Hutt at the top of the table, um, again, having a, a good session and we've 
We'll, we'll have Asher and uh, Sue on when they release their earnings results. Um, Asher came on earlier in the year and said, judge me in Q3. Well, if you look at the share price now compared to when it was when he was CEO, it's probably nearly trebled. So um, he's going to get a reasonably good uh, uh, mark from the headmaster when he comes in for his report book. Um, then you've got the likes of Cypher, who, um, you know, a, a, a firm favourite with many retail shareholders. Um, popular pick in the uh, minor madness competition that we're running, and uh, up again nearly eleven percent today. Hive's having a great day. We know about Hive. Hive's, you know, operationally one of the top two miners out there, along with Bit Farms. Um, not the biggest miner. They, they they certainly were in terms of revenue. One of the biggest miners back in 2020, 2021, even most of twenty twenty two, as we we're doing all, all that Ethereum mining, but. Um, they're now looking at HPC um, using some of those H those GPUs that they they have previously that were able to uh, dual purpose them uh, the chips that they had so they they were thinking ahead at the same time when they were mining Ethereum that they had another purpose when the uh, when the when the fork happened back in September 2022 and so they're growing that revenue there. Uh, DMG's having a good day, T Terra Wolf. In fact, you know, many of the mining stocks are over six, seven yeah. percent um today, which is which is really positive. In fact, I think it's just a green across the board. I haven't seen any red miners today. Um so that's welcomed. In terms of uh 52-week high, uh, we've talked about Terra Wolf and we've talked about Core Scientific um have, have, have reached their uh 52-week high in recent weeks there. But if you look at HUT, that's um that's that's quickly getting towards their 52 week high now as well. So, um, it, you know, interesting. So, a lot of miners miles away from all time high. So, even some of the big popular names like Clean Spark, like Riot, like Iron, still a long way to go. So, um, and these are strong mining, mining companies. I mean, Jason came on last night, talked about earnings, talked about production. You know, we've seen some massive increases in hash rate in right in the last um two or three months there uh, you know three x hash month on month i think the last three months they've increased in terms of operational hash rate he tells us that gap's going to get closer as we um as we move forward and that's what we want to see there's too much of a gap at riot in terms of installed hash rate versus operational hash rate so we want that gap to close um other miners seem to be able to do it in a, in a more speedier time frame so we want right to do that and be and, and and be where they should be, you know, in that sort of that, that top two or three Bitcoin miners, which they are. Yeah, most definitely. What was most encouraging to me last night as a shareholder of Riot was hearing that average uh, electricity cost was yeah. inclusive of transmission fees because they're not yet in operation a full year. So they're not eligible for the 4CP. So the fact that that's able to come down even further next year is extremely encouraging. You're right, though, as long as they can get that operational hash rate up and hashing. Now, we talk about green across the board. You're right in that statement. However, the company that's the worst performer today, still in the green, Bit Digital, lowest on the mm -hmm. list here. Interestingly enough, they came out with a couple pieces of news, very bullish. Uh, one with the Boosteroid deal, which we'll get into, and one in terms of a price target and analyst initiation. So I'll let you walk through both of those quickly here, Anthony. But surprised to see Bit Digital not higher up in the pack today. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, Bit Digital again a big favorite with the with the retail um, sector at the moment. Retail retail investors, they like they were the first. Uh, Bitcoin minus to name a big client in in HPC. We know Core Scientific have obviously surpassed that now with the with their contract with Core. We, well, Bit Digital, um, you know, nearly a year ago announced their announced their client, and it was a fifty million pound a year annualized contract, which has uh, since increased. Now today they've announced, and they'd already talked about this deal with their uh, Boosteroy, but they put a little bit more. Um, Put a bit more color to the actual deal now, and um, so there's initially, I think it's like 300 GPUs that they're going to be using for this contract, and that will earn at the moment um, just short of about five million dollars over the next five years, so just under a million dollars a year. Now that's less than they were initially indicating. However, um, the agreement itself uh, with Boosteroid um, gives the potential to expand um, in hundred server. Uh, increments because obviously bit digital are going to have to go out and buy these um gpus and and you know um like miners that they're, they're really expensive to buy so 
um, and also find the locations to put them in. Now, these are going to be located across the US um, in a number of different sites. And, you know, it's got the potential. I mean, you know, the size of this gaming company, you know, they could get to something like 50,000 servers if everything goes perfectly and and, and the uh, expansion gets to where the potential is. And that could earn up to 700 million in revenues. And that would be significant. And what you can see is you can you can sort of now look at Bit Digital, and they're they're sort of moving away from the Bitcoin mining. I think they're not going to grow any more Bitcoin mining. Whether they whether they um, even maintain the Bitcoin mining or separate the company out as HPC, that's certainly an option for them. And that takes us on to the second update today that we've had from um, an analyst firm who've given Bit Digital. Um, a stock price target of $12. Now, today, I think the share price is operating around about $3.5, maybe slightly higher than that. So that's a significant increase. Now, what Clearwater have done is they've looked at the revenues going forward, and they've based this $12, uh, $12 uh, share price on the um, earnings that they're going to achieve or the estimated earnings that they'll achieve in 2027. Now, with HPC, unlike Bitcoin mining, which is volatile, HPC is far more predictable. So when you're trying to forecast HPC revenues and um, margins, it's a little bit more easy. You know what the uh, the, the revenues are going to be because you've got a contract for that and you can calculate the, the cost fairly equally as well because of energy required, staffing required, et cetera, et cetera. So these analyst firms can really look at the uh, the HPC elements of these companies and and be very more more effective when they're when looking at pricing so uh, 12 12 dollars you know again people will say you know are, are they are they under undercooking it and and maybe they are because you know that's based on what's known now if any of these contracts increase from where they are that will give more um earnings be you know ebitda earnings before income and in, income tax and uh, depreciation so um that that you know that that's even more high potential but you know twelve dollars is probably one of the best multiples we've seen of any of the mining stocks at the moment we've seen recent ones for iron at twenty dollars we've seen core scientific as well we've we've seen clean spark targets as well but nothing like you know three to four times the current share price so that's something to bear in mind there but uh, yeah a, a good update for bit digital today yeah i thought so as well and like i say surprised to see them <laughs> at the bottom end of the pack Sam has expressed multiple times uh, his thoughts about spinning out the Bitcoin mining. And I, as well as you, Anthony, think they could potentially either sell off or spin that portion of the business out as they are definitely focused on HPC after that tier three uh, data center purchase we saw just a, a couple press releases ago. So shifting gears now, we wanted to jump over to October production results bit Farms was first out of the gate yesterday, as they always are. We now have a flurry, I think five or six more of these nice little tables you put together, Anthony. You've been posting them on uh, Twitter as well, or X, getting a lot of feedback and dialogue, which is great to see. Obviously, a lot of people are very involved and passionate about these miners. We've got the Miner Madness competition right now. You and I are still managing to hold out first and second. Uh, I think both now in the top 100. I'm in the top 20 of the analyst selection. So we're actually updating the website right now to have an analyst live leaderboard among a few other enhancements that we've been working on. So make sure you guys drop by the website, check that out. But without further ado, Anthony, first up, Cypher Mining, October production, 164 Bitcoin. So about a 9% increase month over month. So less than we saw with Riot, but still a strong performance here. Yeah, maybe just maybe 164, slightly less than 164. They came out with 168 Bitcoin, but what they do with their um, their updates, they actually include <clears throat> the equivalent Bitcoin that they uh, converted for the power sales that they do with their energy strategy. So I removed that and I've included it at the bottom of the table to to highlight because actually that's not revenue; that's a reduction in costs. So. Um, Bitcoin mined approximately about 164, which is a 9% increase on September. Um, great to see the operational hash rate of their sites go up to 10.7 now. So that's in double digits for the first time. That's a 15% increase in what they had in September. Um, deployed mining machines 
actually reduced. Now, what that would tell me then is that they're actually installing <clears throat> far more um, efficient mining machines to replace some of the uh, older machines there. So you've got less machines, but delivering more hash rate. Um, they've utilized some of their hodls. So they've actually sold 248 Bitcoin uh, this month, and they sold a significant amount in September as well. And that was really to pay down some of the uh, costs of uh, their capital cost uh, for this growth strategy there. Uh, in terms of that hodl at the moment, they've still got you know over 1,400 Bitcoin, 1,428, and that's got a value of just about $100 million. So it's a nice uh, position in the Treasury to be in um, should they need to utilise that in terms of various strategies that they could do. So, um, you know, overall, a good update. We know Cypher Mining are certainly looking to move into the HPC um, business. They've uh, got options to purchase uh, two or three or even four parcels of land, most of them about 500 megawatts. So um, <clears throat> the, the future looks uh, bright that way. And, and when you think about these hyperscalers, not looking tomorrow, they're looking over the next three, four, five years. So a lot of these mining companies sitting on land and potential um, infrastructure for hyperscalers to utilise um, in the future and and cipher mining along with another couple of North American miners are, are sitting quite pretty with these options to buy <clears throat> with the power available with the fiber optics available with the the water which are all the elements that you require for these data centers um and uh, yeah uh, looking good now speaking Just of big game. deals core scientific the landmark deal of the year you've been talking about this one for quite some time anthony before they were even on the map now they're moving up the ranks in terms of overall market cap the tail of the tape with this one for me is consistency and really this is what we've talked about ever since they've emerged from chapter 11 they're going through obviously this HPC retrofit or conversion at their data centers right now as they prepare for Core Weave, but still managing, I think, 11.9 or 12 Bitcoin mine per day. Uh, consistency is the name of the game here for Adam and team. Absolutely. Um, and what you've got to remember is Core Scientific are utilizing five of their current facilities um, and refurbishing for or in readiness for HPC. Um, hosting with Core Weave. So they're moving miners probably on a daily basis from site to site. And so, you know, yes, we've seen the um, operational hash rate drop a little bit, drop by 3% down to 19.7, but you've still got a mining company here with 20x hash of uh, machines, and that's not going away. They've got a contract with Block to bring in 15x hash of um, of of more efficient machines and they'll start replacing some of the older stock they've got so bitcoin mining for core scientific isn't finished business yet yes they've got that amazing core weave deal that literally and i mean literally every other miner wants a piece of that sort of deal going forward even jason's you know effectively said you know if a, if a company like core weave came along and they could afford to pay for <clears throat> the uh, the cost of refurbishing some of these sites then they would take the money and 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 take the business as well so you know that's how good a deal that core scientific have got and everybody every mining cr I've, I've spoken to or listened to has complimented adam and the team on achieving that but it's not something that happened you know um you know in in the last few months this has happened over a number of years core scientific worked with core weave went in during the ethereum mining day so they had a relationship a long time ago and then even this year, earlier this year, March this year, they started HPC hosting before that even contract came to uh, fruition, which was announced on the 3rd of June. And we were lucky uh, to go down to that uh, site for the investor day literally a week later and sit with, you know, 50 of the uh, big analysts from, uh, you know, from, from New York and listen to Adam update on the potential of that contract, and even at 200 megawatts there, which is a sizable contract to have, um, the potential to get to 500. And when he was asked about, you know, how soon that could occur, he was, um, you know, you could tell by his expression that he was already looking at uh, imminently, um, you know, signing paperwork to increase that deal. And literally, as we got back um, to <clears throat> to our homes from travelling over to Texas, the first, the first of those. Uh, um extensions to the 200 was was announced and we've had two further extensions to get to the 500 magic target uh, the 500 megawatts of uh, hosted 
HPC. But for October, we're talking about Bitcoin mining. So mining uh, in terms of Bitcoin for the, for the month of October was 369. That's an increase of 7%, even though the hash rate was reduced. Now, obviously, <clears throat> what that means is they were getting better utilization um, from from their from their machine. So, you know, having having you know a hash rate is one thing, but if you're having to curtail because of certain uh, requirements, maybe um, in Texas, I know there's a lot of um, uh, requirements to switch off for the 4CP program, which most of the miners are part of. And also when the weather uh, or the demand requirements for the domestic um, uh, requirements are, are, are required, then miners will switch off. They're good citizens in these areas. They want to make sure that domestic supply doesn't get um, uh, affected and they can switch on when the domestic uh, requirement reduces. That's the great thing about Bitcoin miners. So, you know, um, in terms of Bitcoin mine, an increase of 7% with actually less hash rate. The deployed fleet has dropped down by uh, by 6,000 there. Now, that could be a case of them moving, you know, site to site. So at the moment, there's, there's miners in for transition. Uh, fleet efficiency <clears throat> was slightly worse. So again, it's again it's the mix of miners that are actually... Um, um, being utilized in October compared to September. So when you're looking at 6,000 miners of different uh, efficiencies, that could affect the efficiency there. And also, <clears throat> what we're going to remember is these uh, mining companies, it's not just a case of let's just you know push the uh, on button and switch on the machine. They can actually um, uh, do some really creative uh, work by you know powering up, powering down on these machines, getting the right level of power, the right level that we, you know, we hear these terms underclocking, overclocking. And we know from the likes of Core Scientific, the likes of Hive Digital, that, you know, when you're certainly sometimes underclocking these machines, you get um, really good output with a lot less um, energy re um, uh, to required. So that keeps your energy bill down, but you get good output as well. So Core Scientific and a number of other miners like Hive Digital have been able to utilize that sort of strategy. Um, in terms of, you know, they sell their Bitcoin on a on daily basis. I think they sold 370 Bitcoin during the month. And um, for that, they receive revenues of $24.2 million. So they're not using a HODL strategy at the moment, but had Adam has indicated, and I believe now they are uh, more than entitled to HODL uh, going forward. So <clears throat> the company are obviously, you know, uh, still, you know, in that early days, you know, we, we, you know, we talk about the success of this year, but you've got to remember in January, they were still in chapter 11 until, you know, the third week of January. So they've come on an amazing journey and they're still probably still finding their mining legs effectively um, and getting everything right going forward. So they've had a, you know, a number of uh, changes in the, in the senior management team that Adam came in and joined 2023 <clears throat> during that chapter 11 period there and it was um it was a, an appointment that was recognized not just by you know um the shareholders and investors of course scientific but recognized across the industry adam had worked with a number of the miners so a lot of people you know the likes of riot argo blockchain knew of adam well before um he was ceo of course scientific and he had a great uh, resume and um, he's proven to be a, a you know a leader there. I mean, we've we've I've met Adam you know number of times now um, over the last year or so, and you know have managed to have some really great conversations with him. Uh, look forward to him on the podcast this week as well. We've got him on Thursday, so the results come out tomorrow. <clears throat> we've got Core Scientific on Thursday, so look forward to those results there. We know that miners are going to have a a red a red um, quarter for Q3 because we've had two of the biggest names come out already Cypher and Riot and um and and you can just imagine that the, the rest of the mining um uh, results that come out will be of a similar a similar type there the maybe you know, it'd be interesting to see what Bit Digital do because Bit Digital have significantly more HPC revenues than Bitcoin mining revenues. So maybe they book the trend, but I still believe that you know the great majority of miners will be in the red for Q3. Compass Mining is your trusted partner in Bitcoin mining. Whether you're investing in one machine or thousands, our customizable solutions are tailored to meet your needs. We are your experts in Bitcoin mining, offering a platform where individuals and businesses can purchase hardware, host machines, and access a range of ancillary Bitcoin mining services. We also specialize in large-scale site development and data center operations. Discover more at compassmining.io and see how we can power your success today.
Yeah, you're totally right about that, Anthony. Now, the next one up is CleanSpark, another heavy hitter in the space. Strong production this month, 655 Bitcoin. So approaching that 700 Bitcoin milestone. We heard Jason talk about the 500 Bitcoin milestone as a real psychological barrier. So it's interesting to see these companies continuing to push the envelope. What did you think about CleanSpark October results? Yeah, good update by CleanSpark. Um, broke through um, since September, they broke through the 30 exahash and they've now got 31.3 installed exahash. So they're about six away from their end of year target. And, um, you know, even uh, Zach and uh, Matt were sort of indicating that, you know, that's a, a target that could be um, uh, you know increased um, or exceeded. Sorry, it's probably the right words used by the end of the year. Um, so, you know, six, seven weeks left at the end of the year, they've still got another six exercise. Don't believe they'll get there, but they've certainly um, uh, done really well this year in getting that, that hash rate to where it needs to be. Uh, in terms of Bitcoin mine, 655, so a 33% increase in Bitcoin from what they achieved in September. That was helped by the operational hash rate increasing from 23.4 to just under 30 at 29.6. That's a 27% increase there. In terms of actually mining machines, they've increased the number of mining machines by 4%. So again, what uh, CleanSpark are doing is they're actually <clears throat> bringing in um, more efficient miners, replacing some of the older miners there. And obviously that's helping to get the hash rate um, up there. Efficiency improve as well. So we've now seen, um, you know, another miner go, you know, effectively sub 21. So we've got Bit Farms at 21. We've got Iron at 16. Now we've got CleanSpark who've reduced their efficiency or improved their efficiency from 21.94 down to 20.89. That's a 5% increase. And that will continue to to drop as more of these new machines get installed. So the remaining um, six X hash there will be new machines. So we'll see that come down probably under 20 X hash by the end of the year. They're effectively hodling all their Bitcoin. There is a, a small amount there, which is part of director's remuneration, but um, their hodl increased to 8,701. And they're sort of very quickly now catching um, Hut 8, um, who were the third largest hodl behind Marathon and um, Riot. And that huddle for CleanSpark gives them a total valuation as at the end of September of $610 million. So again, a great war chest to have um, in case of uh, opportunities that may come up um, in terms of sites, in terms of um, purchasing more machines. Uh, now we know CleanSpark have been very much vocal about you know being a pure play miner. They're not interested in the HPC side. So of all the mining companies, this one is definitely um, very vo much vocal that they believe Bitcoin mining is the way forward. Um, and if the price, you know, Bitcoin gets to you know well over hundred thousand uh, dollars, and and if you listen to Sam Tabar, it needs to get to about one hundred thirty, hundred forty thousand dollars before that conversation turns back then you know clean spark are, are sitting well they're putting all their effort into growing hash rates and they're certainly achieving that now literally only uh, marathon exceeds them in terms of uh, operational hash rates at the moment so right are very close now they're they're only uh, you know not far behind uh, clean spark a couple of x hashes away and i know the end of year targets are effectively you know one or two x hashes away as well so but clean spark have um, have had a really good year um, got that hodl to where it needs to be and um, have benefited. Um, and we'll hopefully see the share price get back to where it was earlier in the year because they've still got a long way to go back to that all-time high. More than The share price would need to more than double from where it is today to get back to the March numbers where the, the, you know, the stock was pretty much valued. The, the company was valued nearly uh, towards $5 billion at one point. So... Um, it's pulled back a little bit now, and Riot's gone past as the third largest miner behind Marathon and Core Scientific. But um, look at October's updates; so it's a good update, solid update from CleanSpot, as we as we expect and as we see month after month. Yeah. Totally agree with that one, Anthony. It is interesting to see how far away CleanSpark is from their 52-week high, despite the Bitcoin price right now and the production increases we've seen. But as you attested there, a tremendous increase in operate, operational hash rate and obviously Bitcoin mined. 
Now, I mentioned uh, Clean Spark was obviously pushing the envelope. Another one that's pushing the envelope up only 2% month over month in terms of Bitcoin mined, but second month now breaking through that 700 Bitcoin barrier in a month, coming in with 717 is Marathon. You've talked a lot about HODL so far, so we'd be remiss if we didn't bring up their HODL as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's the one thing that stands out well for Marathon month after month. We know their production's a bit up and down. Um, they when they when they have a good month, Marathon have an exceptionally good month. I mean, you know, go back to was it December? I think they broke every Bitcoin mining record possibly. Um, uh, you know, eighteen hundred Bitcoin, eighteen hundred and fifty three, if I remember rightly, um, Bitcoin there. So, if you think about how much they've grown in hash rate this year, and the fact that in October, this is past the halving, so you could reduce by half um, and look at what they're mined today. So they mined 717 Bitcoin in October. <clears throat> That's a significant amount lower than what they mined in December last year, taking the halving into account as well. So if you look at that 1853, reduce that by half, that's into that sort of 926. So that's over 200 Bitcoin less. And that's down to effectively um, a lot to do with the difficulty. So the difficulty impacting miners. And when you've got a minor size of marathon, you can clearly see how much that's impacting. Um, yes, it was an increase from September. So about 2% increase there. And that was helped by the fact that their operational hash rate has now gone over 40 for the first time ever. So they're at an all-time high in terms of energized um, hash rate, 40.2. And they're able to, uh, they were able to achieve um, an average operational hash rate of 38.6 during the month of October. That was a 7% increase what they were doing in September. That accounted for some of that increase there. Uh, fleet efficiency, um, you know, the last time they updated, 23.2. <clears throat> but in terms of HODL, this is where it gets um, really interesting now. Um, you know, 27,562 Bitcoin. Uh, their strategy is clearly to mine and purchase Bitcoin at every opportunity. They recently uh, raised um, some funds via a convertible uh, note and used um, some of that money to purchase a significant amount of Bitcoin. So, And it's not the first time this year. They've, they've made two or three purchases this year. It looks like uh, Marathon have been you know, having a chat with Michael Saylor and uh, adopting the micro-strategy um, uh, technique in, 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 in using uh, debt to pay for Bitcoin. We raised that with Jason last night, and he was saying the absolute opposite. You know, he wants to mine Bitcoin and mine it at the cheapest amount and increase solo yeah. that way. Now, you know, if Bitcoin gets to 200,000, everyone's be going to be saying what a great strategy Marathon did. So, you know, um, time will tell. But that hodl itself is worth just under $2 billion. So, again, a big war chest. Now, they have utilized some of their uh, hodls. So, so not all of that is um, unrestricted. Um, I think there's about four hundred million that is 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 actually <clears throat> um, being used to um, cover um, uh, the, a, a loan. So um, you know, it's but it still leaves them a significant amount. And they've also got a reasonably good cash balance as well. So um, all in all, um, you know, I would say it's a it's a good update for Marathon. There's still room for improvement. They're not going to be anywhere near the top of the operational. Um, metrics for the month of October, but uh, they're not going to be they're probably not going to be at the bottom either. So um, you know, but that hodl stands out as the as the beacon of light really across all the mining companies, and everyone everyone will want that level of uh, Bitcoin on the balance sheet. Yeah, they certainly will. I want that level of Bitcoin on my personal balance sheet. I'm nervous tonight uh, transferring my small amount through these ledgers back and forth to cold storage. We've talked to a few of the CFOs at events and dinners and things, Anthony, that have told us how nerve wracking it is to actually transfer this Bitcoin around, whether they're selling it or putting it in a cold storage. So I can only imagine with Marathon when you're responsible for that amount of Bitcoin. Now, next up, we obviously had Jason on last night, so we won't go through right it in detail but i wanted to point out marathon i just mentioned was up two percent month over month in terms of bitcoin production riot managed to do 23 so they broke through that 500 bitcoin barrier jason said that was a real psychological milestone for the team obviously corsicana coming on very strong so i'll let you go through the highlights here anthony but a great looking month in my opinion from riot 
Yeah, it's it's uh, again, it's it's great to see the average oper operational hash rate because that's the most important figure on this table. That increased from nineteen point five in September to twenty two point seven. So that's three point two of extra hash rate increase there. So that, some of that came on at, uh, at Rockdale and and some at Corsicana as well. As as uh, Jason uh, articulated, now that some of even building four, which is B two, has started to be energized. So, um, and as we say, the whole of uh, building B two will be energized before the end of the year, getting them to that target they need to get to. But that's a nice sixteen percent rise there. Again, with that building energized there, that's another hundred megawatts um, on top of their uh, operational power. So they've now got um, over a gigawatt of power under their um, under their control. Uh, fleet efficiency increased by 6%. Now it's down to 23 And Jason, if you haven't listened to the podcast last night, take some time to listen to it. It covered a lot of topics. It was a good 60 minutes uh, interview. And he, he talked quite a bit about the fleet efficiency. Also the presentation. Have a quick look at the presentation. Um, it's quite in-depth. And then it talks about as that efficiency will go down <clears throat> to a target of about 18 and a half, um, I think towards the end of, end of next year. Now, Bitcoin HODL, uh, we've just had the, the largest HODLer, uh, Marathon Digital. Here's the second largest HODLer, Riot. And they've uh, one thing Riot have done ever since I've been in this space is they've never spent more than their um, Bitcoin they've mined. So they've never eaten into the HODL. They've always either um, just converted their whole operation for the month into into um uh, dollars to, to pay for bills or they've hodled a proportion of it and this year for the majority of months they've actually been in the same way clean spark they've been um, increasing their hodl by their full full production effects so yes there's there's four bitcoins sold there but again it's down to director's remuneration so they're literally hodling everything there and um, the hodl in terms of valuation again it's a great valuation for riot it's 767 uh million dollars um as at the end of october and if you look at today's price that's probably close to where it was at the end of october as well so that still retains that value there in terms of power credits they've not been as great this year for any of the mining companies in texas the weather hasn't been um to the either of the extremes so you know, what they were earning last year in terms of uh, power credits and and uh <clears throat> or energy credits and power sales, it was significantly more, uh, maybe even treble the amount they've done this year. So they, they managed to achieve about a million dollars in October, which was a 55% reduction in September. Now, bear in mind, the four months, June, July, August, September, are the, are the biggest months. So you can expect now October, November, <clears throat> maybe pick up in December as, 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 if, as if the cool weather starts, that will maybe give them some opportunity there. Uh, and then finally, we'll look at what the the power cost was that uh, they were able to achieve. Now, in September, that was uh, three and a half cents uh, uh, a kilowatt hour. In October, that's three point nine cents. Now, year to date, and their earnings came out. So, from from uh, to September thirtieth year to date, um, that was uh, three point one cents as an average. And Jason again on the podcast talked about that last night. So, if you haven't watch the podcast, go and watch what Jason has to say about power costs. Really intriguing. You get a feel for what they're doing out there. They've used in the market uh, rates for Corsi Khan, and they've got this uh, amazing um, PPA agreement for Rockdale, which was, uh, we say, inherited when they bought the site. Um, and you won't get PPA agreements at that level now because it'd be far too more expensive. But, um, yeah, I'd, I'd say a good month for Riot. Certainly in terms of their operational production now is certainly massively improving. They're actually getting close to the likes of Bit Farms and Knives. So um, interestingly, um, you know, we'll, we'll get more of these months. But I want to see that gap where it says average operational hash rate 22.7 and total hash rate of 29.4. That gap still needs to close. It's still more than six and a half X hash between it. Look at a lot of the other miners there. They're down to, you know, they're probably at 95%. Um, of average compared to total. So we want to see right get close to that. And what that will do then is give them more Bitcoin mined and everything falls out from that there. It's all about mining as much Bitcoin as you can uh, with the machines that you've got. It sure is. Revenue, top line. It's all about the Bitcoin. Now, <clears throat> another impressive month here from DMG. So I talk about Marathon 2%. Then we talk about CleanSpark 23%. 
DMG up 48% month over month in terms of Bitcoin production. So you talk about that being the only thing that matters, Anthony. We know DMG just did a fleet upgrade. We covered that on the channel. We're looking forward to having them back on soon to talk about the results they're seeing. But this is truly an incredible month for this smaller Canadian miner. Yeah, no, it's a good month and and long overdue. We 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 were covering the fact they were installing these um T21 miners, you know, earlier this year and there was delays, 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 but they managed to get them uh, installed now and that's delivered um their hash rate where it needs to be. So operational or excised uh, hash rate or plugged in hash rate at the moment 1.65. <clears throat> That's um, you know only a slight increase in last month, but remember last month um, they were installing them, so you're not going to get um, you know you're not going to be able to mine Bitcoin as you're installing them. So you look at what the um, the the average operational hash rate for September compared to uh, October, it's a 39 percent increase, and that's reason why the Bitcoin mine increased by 48 percent. Now again for a small miner, DMG. Um, were, were uh, a, you know able to you know to hodl and they you know even selling um, quite a large chunk they sold seventy one bitcoin uh, during the month of October for two reasons one <clears throat> was to pay off a or pay down a loan for a building and the second one was to meet some statutory requirements um, um, so so they fulfilled those two requirements there. Um, it still gives them, you know, just under 400 Bitcoin, which has got a valuation of 28 million. So again, a small miner with a with a very very good treasury, um, and you know, if if a, a you know opportunities arise, it gives DMG you know the ability to go into there because the challenge at the moment is how to raise capital. One thing DMG haven't been doing that other mining companies have been doing in the space is they've not been using uh, dilution as a way to grow. They've been doing it far more organically. Um, and that appeals to a number of investors. Um, share prices are doing really well today. We've already talked about that. But, um, <clears throat> um, you know, in terms of um, operations as well, they're always in that top half of all the mining companies there. So they're not too far behind the likes of Bit Farms and Hive and Iron. Um, so they hold they hold their own that top that top group of miners there. Maybe it's a I mean, Canadian thing. We've quite a few of these miners that do well are Canadian miners. So, um, but yeah, a, a really good update, solid update, and um, you know, nice to see a good increase in the Bitcoin mine. We work hard, and there's cold weather up here. It's very favorable to the mining conditions, Anthony. But appreciate the call out. The only problem with Canadian miners, and we talked about this again yesterday, unless you're headquartered in the United States, you're ineligible to be included in any of the indices. And as these companies start to get a higher and higher market caps, that becomes a bigger and bigger issue. So definitely something to be said for Canadian work ethic and performance metrics, but something to be said for U.S. companies in in terms of investment focus and attention as well. So with that being said, the final miner we wanted to cover in terms of October production results in today's video is none other than Terra Wolf. We know we have a big wolf pack following on the channel, Anthony. So take us home with October production from the wolf pack. Yeah, so um, a couple of points about Terra Wolf. They recently sold the Nautilus uh, uh, facility or their stake in the Nautilus, which was 25%. They got some re region of about $92 million. And that's going to help the capital expansion uh, for their HPC uh, business that they'll look to um, communicate more about um, between now and, and, and 2025. That being said, obviously, the hash rate previously was 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 a lot higher than it was this month so you know you've lost just under 2x a hash of, of mining machines now some of those mining machines from the north of the site are going to lake marin and are going to replace the um the less efficient machines at lake marin so improve the efficiency there's quite a few s19 xps at uh, nautilus or there were so those are going to the lake marin site improve efficiency there they're still on track to increase the bitcoin hash rate but that will happen between now and the end of the year um, in terms of mining, then uh, 150 Bitcoin mine this month, as opposed to 176 last month. So that's 15% down. But actually, it's an improvement on Lake Mariner uh, from what they did last month. There, I think it was 140 at Lake Mariner last month. So it's an improvement of 10 Bitcoin there. 
Um, in terms of hash rate at the moment, now they're down to 8.1 as a total um, hash rate that's installed. It was previously 10, so a drop of 19% there, but I've already articulated as to why is that happening. Um, the average ha hash rate is um, has, has also come down from 17% down to 68 And in terms of the power, they were operating at 245 megawatts. We've lost 50 megawatts at North, so I've got that down in my calculations, 195. However, some some positive um points to, to, to note is that the actual efficiency of the machines out late Mariner is down to 22. And so that puts them in the sort of like top five of all mining companies at the moment in terms of efficiency rates. That means that they should be able to start producing uh, Bitcoin cheaper, uh, less energy required, therefore less cost of energy. Um, they won't have the benefit of that two cents a kilowatt hour. So they are using the, the market rate and the market rate for October was... I think 4.8 cents a kilowatt hour, so slightly how, higher than previously because they were benefiting from 2 cents a kilowatt hour for the nuclear, and that was pretty much 24-7, no need to curtail that energy. Now, what Terrell do uh, that not many miners do is they actually tell you how much it costs to mine a Bitcoin uh, in terms of energy, and for the month of October, that was $36,789, which was a 5% increase on the previous month. Now, bear in mind, the previous month, they did have the benefit of the, of the power... Uh, costs at Nautilus. So not as big an increase when you consider the, the difference in market price versus uh, fixed price um, of two cents a kilowatt hour. So, you know, overall, um, a, a, you know, a good update. We know where, where this is going. We're just waiting now effectively for, for more updates uh, with regards to HPC. They are, you know, they're, they are effectively looking to, you know, expand Lake Marriott to provide HPCs there. And so, as I already articulated, the, the proceeds that they received from uh, selling their stake in the Northless facility there, um, that's gone towards uh, financing the expansion at Lake Mariner, which is a 72 and a half megawatts of hosting, uh, HPC hosting. Um, and facilities CB1 and CB2 will be due for completion um, in the first two quarters of 2025, respectively. So you can see full steam ahead now. All the thing that we need to know now is is basically, are they going to announce who the client is? Um, but it looks like everything's getting prepared in readiness for that. And I think we've got uh, Patrick Fleury booked in on the podcast um, when their earnings come out. So, you know, Patrick's the CFO of Terra Wolf. Um, he knows, you know, if it if it moves with a with a dollar sign, he'll know everything about it. And he's very very uh, transparent. He's probably one of the most uh, transparent um, senior uh, directors of, of any of the mining companies that we've we've come across. There, he's he always gives a frank uh, view of what's happening out there. Doesn't tend to skirt questions. So looking forward to that podcast, uh, and he'll be able to give us a little bit of. Uh, flavor of what's what's happening or what the plan is going forward but uh, it looks like Terra Wolf they've not identified a, a hash rate growth for next year but they're looking to go full steam head on HPC and utilize the remaining power assets that they've got available at Lake Mariner and I think I think they've got something like up to 500 megawatts in total so uh, if you take a look at the mining portion of that which is 200 megawatts at the moment it means they've got another 300 megawatts that they can utilize in other areas um if not mining hpc so that gives them plenty of um opportunities to expand but uh yeah a, 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 another another you know good update there we, we know about the north of the site going so that wasn't a, a total shock um and now one final thing to add about the machines as well i think there's a bit of a um a, a wait for bitmain who they've got an agreement with to re replace i think one and a half exahash of equipment by year end so that will give them an even more a boost in terms of uh, efficiency and get machines that will be then working so that'll deliver more uh, more bitcoin so hopefully get the bitcoin to where it needs to be by year end um it won't be i think it'll only be at the 13 now because obviously nautilus going um <clears throat> unless they can build out facilities that quickly they'll just be probably aiming for something like in the region of maybe um you know 10 and a half to 11 x ash by the end of the year but patrick will be able to give us more of an update when he comes on the podcast and lets us know
Yeah, he certainly will. He's on next Friday, the 15th, actually, uh, CFO Patrick Fleury. So hopefully we can get some more details around this suspected HPC client, as you say, Anthony, but a lot of excitement going on with Terrell. So with that being said, covered a lot of ground today, you guys. We talked about minor madness, Bitcoin price, obviously the election, which we're waiting on. We'll be covering that in tomorrow's video as well. And then Thursday, we've got Core Scientific Adam Sullivan to talk about Q3 results. Yeah, no, it's been a, it's been a it's been a great month for updates so far. And if you look at the majority of these miners, they're actually increasing production, increasing hash rate, increasing efficiency, uh, increasing hodl as well. I mean, you know. Uh, you've got five or six miners now who are effectively holding most of their production. You've still got five or six miners who are selling everything. <clears throat> but um, if the strategy pays off for those and the Bitcoin price does rally to $140,000, then some of those miners, and you've got four or five miners with a significant amount of, um, of Bitcoin there, um, even going down to the likes of Cypher, You've got uh, you know just under one and a half thousand uh, Bitcoin. You've got Hive. You've got um, you know. Then we go into the big ones. You've got the likes of Clean Spot, Hut, Riot, Marathon. Um, you know we'll really have some strong um, treasury positions as you know ready for the next cycle. Um, and so you know it's going to be really interesting. Jason said last night we talked about would he use the um, Bitcoin balance you know um, for for instead of using dilution and he said you know if, the, if it, it would all depend if the you know if the price was right to sell and it made more um you know the share price wasn't improving it might be more accretive to sell some bitcoin to to, to grow that way and um, bear in mind they've got most of their orders paid for from now until the end of 2025 but it was just interesting to see you know ask that question last night to get his opinion so again if you if you're a, a right uh, shareholder have a look at the podcast we went through so many topics uh it was a full 60 minute um you know uh question and answer session and um we delved into all those topics that you want to know about stock compensation and production and growth etc etc uh, the only area we didn't cover which is rightly so we couldn't cover bit farms and <clears throat> um, because it's not something they can talk about at the moment they've got a, there's a special meeting coming up uh, in the, in this month actually where uh, more more things will be highlighted but at the moment um yeah i'm i'm quite pleased with with rights progress we just want to see um you know some of those uh, some of that operational hash rate get closer to the energized hash rate and i think everyone will be happy yeah i couldn't agree more anthony we're going to continue to see production reports come out for the remaining miners and then obviously uh earnings on top of that which we've got scheduled over the next couple of weeks as well so a lot to go on but today the story really is this u.s election and that's what we're going to be talking about here tomorrow as well so thanks for the hour today you guys great discussion great to see some of these operational hash rates and month over month production numbers increasing and alongside that, of course, the Bitcoin price. So if you're still watching, hit the like button. Feel free to subscribe. We'll see you back here tomorrow.